At the Adapt Design step, pop-up notifications may appear during various stages of design adaptation. You can always choose to let the software make corrections automatically, or you can do it by yourself and press Accept. The software indicates the problem area when pressing the I icon. By enabling the distance map, you can see where potential contacts will emerge. It is recommended to add some material to the spots where the intended point contacts are supposed to be, until you see red collision lines. The distance map only shows proximity, not contacts. That means you have established a contact with the splint surface. The contacts will be adjusted in the next steps. They can be left strong. The numeric value depicts how much contact violation occurs. A standard sculpting operation is advisable at this stage. Use the smooth tool to level sharp edges or transition lines. Also, you can remove material in all areas that are not relevant for the splint type. This will help with the adaptation stage later. Add a considerable bulk of material around the canine to canine region, using the antagonist as a reference point. The idea of the added material is to provide the support for the canine and anterior guidance. This will be automatically adapted by the articulator. At this stage, it's important to establish the centric stops, or static contact points, to get the desired function from the splint. Repeat the following procedure whenever material has been added or removed in the proximity of static contact points, to make sure no unintended material is affecting the splint function. To do so, enable Guide by Incisal Pin, and make sure that Guide by Design is disabled. Then lock both lateroctrusion and mediotrusion, and retrusion and protrusion. Now enter a value of 0 0.01 millimeters in the Adapt Design field, and run articulation. Then press Adapt Design. To check, you can now set the Adapt Design value to 0, and rerun articulation. You should now see collision lines of equal strength from all occluding teeth. Now it's time to create anterior guidance, which means that the protrusive disclusion will be guided by the lower incisors, and the laterotrusive disclusion will be guided by the lower canines. To do so, make sure that Guide by Incisal Pin is enabled, and unlock all the articulator movements. Then run articulation. If enough material has been added, then you should now see blue marks indicating a collision between the splint surface and the antagonist in lateral otrusion, and also black marks indicating protrusive movement. It is now necessary to adapt the splint surface to achieve the desired function of the splint. The first action to take is to select the Area Selection Mode button. Now paint the area on the splint surface that is being antagonized by the lower incisors. Use the antagonist to guide you, then run articulation again and adapt design. The selected area will not be affected by the adaptation. As a result, you'll now see canine guidance slopes on the splint surface. Now select the Area Selection Mode button again and then click the Next icon to remove any currently selected areas. Then make sure that lateral Otrusion and Mediotrusion is locked, and ensure that Retrusion Protrusion is unlocked. Then run Articulation and adapt the design. Following this, make sure that Guide by Incisal Pin is disabled, and ensure that Guide by Design is enabled. Check that both laterotrusion and mediotrusion and retrusion and protrusion are unlocked. And run articulation to see the dynamic occlusion and what the contact patterns look like. Laterotrusion and mediotrusion contacts are green and blue, and retrusion and protrusion contacts are black. You will most likely find that the canines are not guiding the laterotrusion disclusion. To create canine guidance, you'll need to add material gently to the lateral slopes, bilaterally, 
until the desired disclusion is achieved. It is common to see the lateral incisor forming a contact alongside the canine. This can often be discluded by adding material to the canine's lateral otrusion slope. Run the articulation after adding material to see the effect on the contact pattern. After the canine guidance is sculpted, at this stage it's important to once again establish the centric stops or static contact points as we do not wish to unintentionally increase the interocclusal clearance. After establishing the static contacts, make sure that guide by incisal pin is disabled and that guide by design is enabled. And make sure that both lateral intrusion and mediotrusion and retrusion and protrusion are unlocked before running articulation again. Repeat this procedure whenever material has been added or removed around the static contact points. You should see incisors forming the protrusive contact pattern. Please note that an incisor heavily below the general occlusal plane can also be left out of the main contact pattern, as long as the other incisors are contacting the splint surface. You can add or remove material to strengthen or weaken the contact pattern induced by each antagonizing tooth smooth out or remove any contact patterns resulting from unwanted teeth. The key point to remember is that it is a process of adding, removing and smoothing along with running articulation to assess the impact that will help you with adapting the design to your desired outcome. Running the articulation after each sculpt action gives you immediate feedback on the effect of the changes made. To check if the splint is going to work properly at the final sculpt step, make sure that guide by design is enabled and ensure that guide by incisal table is disabled. Now the movements will be guided by the splint's geometry. You can now check that the posterior disclusion is guided by the canines in lateral intrusion and by the incisors in protrusion. When satisfied with your design, move further on.